right, let's take a look at the homework problems. So we've got a two kilogram puck traveling initially at five meters per second and it's brought to rest over a distance of four meters. So let's draw an energy bar graph of the puck when it first moves and then when it's brought to rest. Now we're actually moving horizontally and we don't have any gravity energy because we're on the ground and we don't have any elastic energy because we're not compressing a spring. All of our energy is stored purely as kinetic energy. Now the interesting part here is we don't have any kinetic energy left because we um, come to rest. We don't have any gravity energy because we're on the ground. We have a gravity force, but no gravity energy. And then the elastic energy, well, there's no spring acting here. So it actually turns out every single bit of our energy gets dissipated in this system. So that's part A. Now for part B, let's calculate the energy dissipated using the bar graph. This is actually going to be a little bit more straightforward than you might think. So let's set the bar graph equal, EK equals the dissipated. And if you notice my approach every single time, I don't try to get in there and try to figure things out. I start with the bar graph, I set up my energy equation, and only then do I try to plug in formulas. So I know the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half times m times v, whoops, v squared. And what I can do then is set that equal to the dissipated energy. And that's going to be 0 0.5, that's just a half, times 2 kilograms, times 5 squared, which is 25. Um, that's going to be E dissipated. And finally, what I'm actually getting is that the amount of this dissipated energy is in fact equal to 25 joules worth of energy. Now, the, um, letter C, we're going to actually do in class uh, tomorrow if you're in periods A and D, and on Tuesday if you're in period E. So, here we go. Um, a ball falls from a height of 8 meters and reaches the ground at a speed of 8 of... Uh, a ball falls from a height of 5 meters and reaches the ground at a speed of 8 meters per second. And it says, draw an energy bar graph and calculate the dissipated energy from air resistance. So apparently, what we're saying is that if there were no air resistance, it would reach the ground faster than 8 meters per second. Um, just as a side challenge, uh, see if you can calculate what that speed would be using energy uh, considerations. So, um, and I think uh, if you do it, you should get 10 meters per second. Anyway, let's just do the problem here. So we're not going to do Part B that we're doing in Mon we're doing on Monday for uh, A and D and Tuesday for Period E. Let's just first start with the energy bar graph. So we have all gravity energy. And what happens is that it's going to get converted into, we're told, kinetic energy because we know it's moving. And we're told that there's dissipated energy. So when we actually write down this equation, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and I'm just going to write it here. We're going to have EG equals EK plus ED dissipated. Now let's plug in numbers. So I have m times g times h equals one half m times v squared and that is uh, and then we have to add to that the dissipated energy, which we're going to calculate. So let's plug in our numbers. Um, now, you know what? I forgot to do this. L I, you need a mass for this. And I told D period, sorry, A period, I didn't tell you this. Or maybe it was A period and I told him D that it wasn't. Um, but the mass, let's say the mass is one kilogram. Okay. So to this end, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So we're going to have one times 10 times five equals one half times m, so that's 0 0.5, uh, times one, times v squared, which is eight squared, which is 64, plus e dissipated. And so we can actually go ahead and subtract and when we solve for E dissipated, we're going to end up getting 50 minus 32, which is 18 joules worth of energy.
And so that is the answer for part B. So I hope that's helpful. That's the solution to the homework. And when we come to class on Monday, this is exactly the kind of problem you're going to be appraising on. So I would study this problem really thoroughly because you're going to do this for your appraisal, essentially. So I um, hope that's helpful and see you tomorrow or Tuesday.